Sitting here with my very favorite aunt, my aunt Lessie Deaton, born Lessie Dow in 1903. Four? 1903. 1903. So that makes you today a lovely 87 years 87 old. 87 years old today. And you don't feel 87. You feel about 47. Well, 37. no, I'm not going to say that. I, I feel my years, but I'm just so happy that, you know, that I'm as well as I am at 87 years old. You know what we say about you, Aunt Lassie, all the time? No. Back from the time that I first uh, remember ever seeing you until the time that you came out to see us in Texas once, and to every visit that I have here, Daddy, my wife, and I talk about you, and we say that you are one of the nicest, kindest persons we've ever known. Uh, I don't know that I have ever heard you, uh, even under the worst of circumstances, stop and tell anybody how badly things were going. You always make the best out of whatever it is that you have or whatever your condition. I sure do. And and I and I think that your your abounding confidence and faith in the Lord has a great deal to do with that. It sure does. You, that. You've had a lot of ups and downs in your life. Lots of them. And, Lots of them. And you've managed to go through it here. With the help of the Lord I've gone through. And here in the 90s and you're almost 90 years old yet you handle yourself and you are uh, you are uh, you behave in, in, in many respects uh, as if you're a much younger person than, uh, oh, I don't know, people in their 50s even. I appreciate I you that's thinking I think that. About. Now that I've said all these that. good things about you, <laughs> well, I wanted to talk to you because for the family, you were the oldest child that's of right. eight or nine. Eight. Eight, eight children. Oldest of eight children. Just uh, three of us left. Three of you left. And I wanted to know if I could uh, visit with you for a few minutes here today and get you to tell me about some of the memories you had of growing up, where you grew up, about your mama and your daddy, papa. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could talk about uh, your brothers and sisters as, uh, as you grew up and tell me a little bit about them. And then what I thought I would do is make a copy of this tape so that, who knows, 50 years, 100 years from now when somebody's watching this, they can say, Look at those two old codgers back in 1990. <laughs> you didn't think you'd come this close to the 21st century, did you? No, I sure didn't. Well, I sure it, didn't. You've done it, and you've done it well. What, what are your first memories uh, that, that you can uh, recall, Aunt Leslie, back uh, the turn of the century? Uh, as a little girl, do you recall from the time you were three, four, five years old? Well, I must have been around five years old when I first started the school. And we just had a little one-room school. And I can't remember how many grades they had there, but we all was in this one little room. Now we're in Crystal Springs. No, today. that was not in Crystal Springs. No, Spring. no, that was in in uh, I guess you would call it Florence. It was out from Florence, between Florence and Star, Mississippi. Which would be near Jackson. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Was it yes. just country in those it days? It was just country, just nothing but country those days. And we had we didn't live very far from this little schoolhouse, and then we would have Sunday school there on Sundays in this schoolhouse. And then they, from, I went to Star to school for a long several years. I can't remember how many years I went there, but Star was the last school that I went to, and I finished this tenth grade. I think maybe at that time that might have been all the, you know, as high as they went. I don't, I don't remember, but I finished the 10th grade at Star. And I can remember my first teacher that I had at Star. He was a Mr. Lipsy, and he was a young man, and that was the first time that he'd ever taught school. And he was colorblind. And we just had more fun <laughs> out of him, you know. And uh, to know what color dresses we had on, we'd <laughs> have him to tell us all of that. And then, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to tell you about him in later years. He came to Brookhaven, Mississippi, and my granddaughter went to school to him. Is that right? In Brookhaven. And when she finished school, well, I was there, of course. 
And at the time, he didn't know that I was in the audience, but he had talked to my daughter about me in the years that they had been there, you know. And how he still remembered me and everything. Did he know what color dress you wore? Yeah, yeah, he knew what color dress I wore. But he told my daughter later that he would have given anything if he had known that I was in the audience that night, that he would have had me to come up on the stage with him. But and skip the and skip few generations, generations there. there. What what but, Aunt Lessie, when you were when you were a young girl growing up, uh Talk about some of the common things that most of the children had. You couldn't go to a supermarket oh, or no. a clothing store down there. Where did you get your clothes? Like, How did you well, go? I'll tell you, we went to Star. They had a, a, I guess you would call it a community store or something. They had everything there. That What clothes we got, we got them there. And food and horse, the gear for the horses and like feed for the horse. General, like a general store, I guess you would call and it. And did you get to wear store-bought store -bought clothes? Not very store? often. And if you didn't have store-bought, what would you do? Well, Mama made our clothes. She would buy some material at this store, and she would make our dresses and things. And we hardly ever had but two pairs of shoes a year, you know. We went barefooted in the summertime. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what it was to wear shoes. Was Papa a farmer then? Papa was a farmer. And tell me about Papa and tell me about Grandmama. Tell me about uh, what you know about their lives as they grew up. This would have been, they grew up uh, after the Civil War. Right? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Papa, I guess he was born, I can't remember exactly when he was in the 1800s, late 1800s. Mama and Papa both were oh, Was Papa an orphan? No, he wasn't an orphan. He, his mother was living, uh -huh. but his father had passed away. But, and how old uh, was he when his father passed away about? Well, it must have been about, let's see, maybe 10 or 12 years old or something because he was out on his own from just a kid, you know, making his own way. You mean he was not living at home? No, he was not living at home. He and my mama got married when she was 15 years old and he was 18 years old. And all they had, all he had, was a little trunk. I have it here now. And he said all the clothes, that, all his possessions was in this little trunk. And they had to run away from home to get married because my grandmother, she didn't like Papa, you see. So she didn't want Mama to marry him. And she thought she was too young to get married anyway. And her maiden name was Mohorn. Mohorn. Right. Emma, right. Emma Mohorn. Emma Mohorn. And, and this was, now where were they living? In those they, were, they were living here at Crystal Springs, right up the railroad track from Crystal Springs. In fact, they got married here in Crystal Springs. And the old house is still there where they got married. And Papa had before then, uh, up till his 18th birthday, he had been traveling, traveling and walking around, the roads. Traveling just walking the roads and working wherever he could find some work to do. You know? Sleeping in the sleeping barn. Sleeping in the barns or, or wherever they would let him and sleep. They, they would give him food and a little right. meager salary. Sour, sour, sour. What he did. And how did he meet uh, Grandma? Well, I think maybe the, uh, my grandmother was working on the same farm that he was working on or something, and Mama met him that way. And, uh, and when you say he was working on the farm, he farm. was really working. He, I mean, was, he was really picking working, peas picking or... peas and hoeing cotton or picking cotton, whatever they had to do on the farm. Nobody had anything but a mule to work to grow this stuff to plow. He didn't have tractors or anything like that then, and it was all done by hand. Now he didn't have a car. He didn't bicycle. have a car or anything. In fact, somebody, when they were coming to get married, let them ride in an old wagon, one horse wagon. They had a horse to this old wagon, and they put his trunk and Mama's little, she said hers was just tied up in a bundle, her little clothes that she could sneak out. And they brought him up here to the preacher and got me. And you, when you were born in 1903, where were you born? What? I was born in Simpson County, mm -hmm. over around uh, uh, Harrisville. Not at a big hospital? No, at home. All of Mama's children were born at home. We didn't, you didn't go to the hospitals those days. And the second child would have been Uncle Dot or Isaac? Uh, uh, buddy, Uncle Buddy. Uncle, I'm Uncle sorry, Oscar. Uncle Oscar, of yeah, course. he was right. the next one. <clears throat> And uh, he was born in, I believe we had moved to, to Hines County then. 
up around out from Terry or that way when he was born. Were you old enough to remember him being born? No. Okay. The, the only one that I, the first one that I can remember being born was Uncle Isaac. Mm -hmm. And see, I'm five years older than he is. Right. So at five years old, I remember the night that he was born. Okay. And uh, then... Uh, Uncle Isaac and Uncle Buddy were born the same day, weren't they? No, she, or you, you and Uncle, I, and Uncle um, Isaac. was born on the same, we was, have the same birthday. Was born on, our fifth birthday. on your fifth birthday. Oh, okay, yeah, now, my fifth birthday. <clears throat> I can remember the night um, that he was born. Now tell me about Uncle Buddy as a little boy. What do you remember about having a little brother? Oh. What kind of a fellow was he? <laughs> i tell you what, we fought more than any of them, I guess. He was a tough fellow. He was a tough fellow. I remember very well one time, well, I, I guess I was about five or six years old. We'd always go to the field with Papa, you know, whether we had anything that we could do at that age or not. And we'd play around this peach orchard, had a big peach orchard close by one of the fields where he worked. And so we'd get out in that peach orchard and eat peaches and play. And so I had a big rising on my arm. I don't know what they call them this day and time. Boil or? We call it boil or a rising right. those days. And he picked up a clot of dirt and threw it at me and hit me right on that ball. Now, Uncle Buddy wouldn't do that. Oh, Uncle Buddy did do that. <laughs> and it hurt me so bad. But Papa tanned him good. He got him a... Were you Papa's a, favorite always? Well, I, they always said I was. They always said I was. I can't remember my daddy ever hitting me a lick. But Mama said he did hit me one time. Well, I've never known but, you to be anything but good. But he, 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 I don't know, just seemed like Papa and me could just get along so good together, you know. And, and Mama was different. Mama, what was she Papa, like? Papa was a person that he loved people. And he just loved anybody that would take up the least little bit of time with him. But now Mama, she was withdrawn. She... She was all to herself. She hardly ever even smiled. Why was that? I don't have any idea. I said I wondered if Mama ever was really happy in her life. Did you ever communicate with her as oh, a yes. young child? Or oh, when you yes. Got older, when I got talk? older, when I got older, we would talk, you know. And sometimes she would just burst out and laugh a little bit, but, but it wasn't often. And what, what about Papa? What, what kind of a fellow was Papa with... Uh, the members of the community. Wasn't Papa really interested? I, I seem to remember as a young boy, I think of Papa with a pipe in his hand, oh, yes. listening to the radio yes. and talking about politics. That's he right. always he loved politics and he loved horse trading. Did he? That was one of his big things, you know. He'd go to these barns up at Yazoo City and he would buy horses and mules and bring them back down to Star and Delo and places like that and sell them. Like to go to the auctions. Like to go to the auctions. And somebody told me that he was really uh, and a he smart, was smart man. man. Not if, a formally educated no, man. He was the smartest if, man you ever met. If he'd have had an education, he would have been something. Is it true that politicians really used to come from Jackson oh, on the weekend? Oh, yes. What would yes. they do? Yes, they used to come and visit with him, and they used to give him money, you know, to get out and work for him. Uh, to try to get them votes and everything, why well, they just give him a he'd make a lot of money from that. <laughs> would they would they ask his opinion? Yes. They'd ask his opinion. Come and talk to him, you know, drive now, him around drive the him around in the cars and everything. I tell you Papa was well thought. And, and tell uh, me tell me about Uncle Buddy as he uh as he got uh Stop just a minute. Uh, I swear we're gonna run out of our it's it's recording again. Uh uh. Now then, so I guess I can tell it. Tell me what kind. Of well, of course, he was my brother, and you know, <laughs> I, you know, I think he was all right. <laughs> this gonna be prejudiced. <laughs> yes, that's right. I we always got along good together and everything, and well, I was always so proud of him. What? I was proud of all of my family, and what? still am. What was he like? Uncle Buddy. Was he fun-loving? Well, he was fun. A lot of fun. Was he rough? 
and he was rough. Was he the roughest of the bunch? Well, I would say, well, I don't know now. We come down to Clifton, you know, the one we call Bo. Now, I guess you'd have to say he was pretty rough <laughs> when it come to that, but he was a good feller, too. <laughs> he was kind of a fun-loving character. He was though, a fun-loving character. And, and I think he went to live with the Lord when he left here, too, for sure. Let's see, now, that would have made, uh, we've talked about the boys, a couple of the girls. You Now, uh, tell me about Uncle Dot. He was the uh, he was the boy born when you were five years old on your birthday. Yeah. And you remember that. Tell yeah. me about that day. On June 1. I can't remember about the day, anything about the day, really. All I can remember is, you know, of course, we lived in a two- or three-room house. And see, I could hear the commotions, what was going on and everything in this other room. I didn't see anything, but I could hear it, and I knew that something was happening, you know. So then, after the doctor had left and everything, well, they called me in to show me my little brother, you know. That I had a little what did you think about that? Oh, I was happy. The more we had, the happier we was. <laughs> Is that is that why you think you and Uncle Dot or Isaac have stayed so close over the years? Well, I do. I really do. He calls you on the phone oh, now? Oh, he calls me on the phone, and, and I go to see him and call him on the phone. Now, my youngest brother, he accuses me of loving Isaac the best. Do you love Isaac the best? No. <laughs> I, I, you know, I have a different kinds of love. There's all kinds of love in this world. And some you just feel close to. And, of course, my youngest brother, I love him because he means the world to me. You're talking about Dick? Dick, that's right. And uh, But he told me last summer sometime that, <laughs> <laughs> that I loved Isaac better than I did him. But I didn't. I don't love him better. I just have a different kind of love for him. Well, Kabat's a pretty easy fellow to like. He's an easy person to like. Got a good heart. Yes, he has. And he's been good to me. He's so good to me. Now, tell me about your two sisters. Well, now, Hallie Mae was my oldest sister, you know. And, oh, we just got along great. And she has two daughters. I hardly ever see them. The only time I ever get to see them now is when we have a funeral somewhere and we get to see each other there. They live in Jackson, and I can't help but wonder, you know, why they couldn't run down to see me just once in a while or call me on the phone and just say hello to it. Make me feel so good. How long has Aunt Hallie Mae been gone? Well, I just can't remember right off. I've got it set been a lot of years. It's been been several years because she died before my son died. And he's been gone seven years. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Aunt Dolly, my baby sister, she's been gone several years too. How and much? I, how much younger was Aunt Dolly? Well, she was. She was a lot younger. You know, she was next to the baby. She was next to Dick. She and Dick were together along there. You know. And uh, of course, your daddy. I can remember just as well the night that he was born, and I can also remember the day that Clifton was born. It, his birthday was the sixth day of August, and Papa grew watermelons. He had all the biggest watermelons. So the neighbor lived across the road, and Mama had sent us over there, us kids over there, to stay till everything was over over there. And we just stood at the picket fence and cried, you know. We wanted to go home. We knew something was happening, and we wanted to go home. Well, after the doctor left then, well, Papa went and got a great big watermelon, and he just could get it up on the shoulder. Well, just before he got to the house, he dropped it. And you never saw such a pretty watermelon. Of course, they turned us kids out, and we, <laughs> we ate watermelon. So I can remember that day so good because, I guess, of that. And then the night that your daddy was born, let's see, I forgot what, his was November, in November, the 29th, he was born. And uh, it was at night, and the doctor came from Star out there. Old Dr. Ball was his name. And Papa gave him a, a 
yearning, you know, for coming out there. People didn't have money those days to pay the doctors, so they would take anything that you had, chickens or hogs or calves or cows or whatever. So Papa gave him a calf for coming out there that night. What was, what was the difference in the temperaments of your brothers and your sisters? What would they be like? Uh, were they all pretty much the same, or did they all have their own peculiar personality? Well, or? they all had their own personalities. Now, you take Isaac, he, I guess he, in a way, has <laughs> the most, is the word peculiar, personality of any of them, really. Well, that's good. And, uh, but... He was always there for any of us that needed him. Now, what what about Uncle Buddy? What was he like? What well, was his... he was too. He he was. He seemed to be more outgoing. Than... Oh yes, he 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 said what he thought. He oh, really didn't that's... care whether you liked him or not. <laughs> he said exactly what he thought. You know. And Uncle Bowl was sort of oh, boisterous, yes, and he was he outgoing was, he and was. fun. But to me. I guess if I ever had a favorite, it would have been him, in a way. I don't know why it was, but I just always had this tender feeling for him, and he did for me. After I got married and moved to, well, before I left Gallman down here, he came, just left home, and came and lived with me and worked on a farm there with my husband's uncle, and he stayed with us. And then he moved me to Utica from there, and he still stayed with me. He stayed with me till he married, and then he left. And Doris, my daughter.